fellas, what's up? I got something really cool to show you today that I feel like an idiot for just now figuring out. All this time and I didn't know this. Now I'm familiar with heat pipe technology and this and that, but I never realized that computer heat pipes are the same as a solar heat pipe. This right here is called a heat pipe. Now, I've taken apart a lot of computers and found these things and just kind of discarded them as copper, threw them in the copper pile. I didn't realize what I had on my hands here. The reality of the matter is this is actually a pipe, meaning you can pump water through it. It's hollow. There is a gas inside of this pipe. I would propose that there is water inside of this pipe under a, a vacuum, which would enable it to boil at um, very low temperatures. You can see that's already kind of boiled off, that little bit of fluid. It's gone. I'm almost positive that's what's going on. I would imagine that the fluid inside would be determined by the application. But for the most part, water behaves very strangely under a vacuum. It does some really odd things. Once you get all the gas uh, pulled out of it and all that, it boils at very low temperatures. And I bet you that's what this is. It's a vacuum chamber with a small amount of water that is boiled off on the CPU at which point that gas vapor travels down the heat pipe to the cold condenser section. I never knew that, man. That is so freaking cool. Check that out. This is basically a diagram that shows what happens. Now they use different vapor mediums depending on um, what they're using it for. This side here would be the condenser. So inside that heat pipe is that open cavity and they use capillary action to uh, return the fluid. You can see here that they've tested centered versus grooved and come to find out the centered powder is able to dissipate the most heat probably because the capillary action of the centered metal bringing the uh, fluid back. Basically that's what's inside on the interior walls of a heat pipe. I just think that's amazing and today as much as I would hate to, I'm gonna cut this one open and we're gonna take a look at it. Now that I learned how cool these things are, I don't wanna destroy it. I wanna shut up, we're gonna cut this thing open and take a look. You can see I accidentally bent it right there. So right away you can see it is in fact hollow. Let's check this out here. I thought about doing a cool experiment, but I don't know that it'd be worth our time. I thought about heating it with the torch and then looking at it with the Flora One image camera. Because earlier when I hit this thing with the torch just to kind of mess with it a little bit, I just hit it with the flame right there real quick while my hand was over here and instantly you could feel the heat. Oh yeah, that bad boy's hollow, you can tell. I never knew this thing was hollow. So essentially, this thing's full of uh, liquid and vapor. When it gets hot, it boils some of that liquid out of the capillary fins. The, this tube gets under pressure and the vapor travels this way, at which point it condenses. Pretty freaking cool. I always thought that was just a copper bar. That is so cool. I'm mind blown as they say. I'm gonna have to pop that open. Look at that. Man, these things are gnarly. Now I knew this burr was gonna block our image. Or visibility anyway. I don't know what that fluid is. I'm trying not to damage it. It appears to just be the center. The best there was, actually. Okay, fellas, I got this old microscope that my dad gave me. This thing is awesome. kind of dirty apparently. Can you see that? It's 
not working. I don't know why, but my phone is doing something. It's reversing the uh, magnification. I swear I could see that thing as if it was the size of a frickin'. Hold on, let me clean this off. Already it's just been sitting over there next to the Cyclotron for years. Alright. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's the centered metal. And the purpose of that, that's actually a pump. That uh, capillates the fluid back to the heated zone. Otherwise, it would just kind of reside over here. It would stay there. But the ingenious idea of wicking the fluid, ooh, there's a good shot. I don't understand why this thing's working the way it is. Fellas, when I look at this through the naked eye, I can see things that the phone can't. I don't understand what's going on here. Maybe I'm just not holding it right. Bear with me. I'm telling you, this thing magnifies insane, but the phone isn't picking it up. It's probably as good as it's going to get, guys. I really wish you could see what I can see. Like, I'm standing here holding this thing about that far away from my head. And it gives you a circle about this big of probably uh, 20, 30x. Ooh, is that it? I think I just magically found it. Now, if I alter this distance at all, it doesn't work with the phone. That's the centered material. Cool, man. By the way, if you've ever wondered how a phone zooms in or how a phone magnifying glass works, they have a sapphire sphere inside of them the size of a tiny ball bearing. This is the very means by which... Ooh, hey, look at that. Almost got some of that super magnification that I could see, but the phone can't. That's so weird, man. I swear this thing is like a microscope, but the phone is um, interacting with it optically in some manner that I cannot describe to you. I'm not going to pretend like I know what I'm talking about. There's no heat grooves in there. Tell you what, I'm going to lay this open with some cutters. Can you see that liquid right there? It's black because of the grit from the cutting wheel. But uh, I don't know what that is. I doubt it burns. I wouldn't be surprised if it had a flammable liquid in it. Probably just water. I read somewhere in the um, text that it's just water. Let me pop that open. which that would make sense because listen to this guys if they put water in this and then put the tube under extreme vacuum that water would behave differently than it does what we're accustomed to it would boil at extremely low temperatures and would act like a solvent of some kind like a volatile extremely volatile substance yep this is just a centered wall and they're saying that centered wall returns that fluid through capillary action. There's no pumping action. So that's, I bet you that's what's going on here, fellas. I guarantee you this thing was under vacuum. I should have pricked it first to listen for a hiss. Yep, that's just centered powder. I don't know about you, but that is one of the coolest freaking things I have seen in a long time. Is that not just ingenious? A copper tube under vacuum with a small amount of water in it to conduct heat away from electronics. Ingenious. 
That is just amazing. I never knew that. This whole time I thought this was just a copper bar. And I always wondered, how does that copper bar transfer heat that far that well? I worried about the effectiveness of these things in the past. But I didn't know this. Man, I can't believe I've thrown these away. So, there you have it, guys. I sacrificed an extremely cool piece of hardware just for you, man. I wanted to see it, too. I didn't want to tear mine open, though. I wonder if there's probably 50 videos on YouTube of people tearing these open. And I just ruined mine. Shit. Anyway. There you have it, fellas. I just, when I discovered this, I mean, I have an appreciation for um, solar equipment, and a lot of solar um, heat pipes use this concept. They'll have a tube filled with acetone, and then they have like that other tube over it. They're uh, double wall heat pipes or something like that, where there's a black tube inside of a, an outer tube, a vacuum tube. So. I'm uh, familiar with heat pipe technology, just never knew that I've got one on my laptop. This laptop here actually has dual heat pipes, one for uh, the processor and the CPU. It's got two of them. I think this one does. Maybe that was my other computer. I could be wrong on that, guys, because it seems like I remember building my own heat junction because this one did not have a uh, conduit pad for the CPU, it just, the heat pipe just ran right over the top of it with no heat compound or nothing. As if Toshiba thought my processor, my GPU wasn't gonna get that hot. But anyway, guys, I just had to share that with you, man, because that's just one of the coolest things that I've learned in a long time. I had no idea that such an amazing technology was lurking right under my nose the whole time. That is just too cool. I'm shutting up, fellas. Just had to share that find with you and had to uh, get some one last hurrah out of this computer here. So come on, man. Hit me up with 100,000 views on this thing. Get me something out of this pile of trash I've been clinging on to. Couldn't bring myself to throw it away. It cost $500 like 10 years ago. <laughs> Nice computer, but don't ever take your computer out in the cold. It'll destroy it. That's what happened to this one. One day in the cold weather, and it was done. GPU needed a reflow, and we all know how that goes. <laughs>